Hello everyone, this is our season of 538, and I'm bringing you my replay from my Polish armor guide. So, let's just dive right in. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this on speed 10. Now, I'm, basically, I'm using a Polish armor deck. Armor's going to do quite well in the middle, so I say, hey, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to push to here. And I'm saying defense, you know, hey, is anyone going to take this? That was kind of my hope, and I didn't, I didn't know if this guy understood. I'm like, question mark, hey, anyone going here? And I just wasn't getting any answers, and that was kind of worrying me. So what I'm starting with anyways, uh, we'll go over what happened on in uh, everywhere else. I'm starting with um, two T-72Ss, and if we can find it, we have some Strela 10Ms. And then, right smack dab in the middle here, we have the Twardy. Um, this is going to be my main driving force, you know, with, even though it's only three tanks, I just didn't have the points to spare. Because I wanted to get that income advantage right away. Just trying to engage um, Borjorg here, or I don't know how to quite how to pronounce that, but he just didn't. Um, I guess you could say like talk to me, and that was very detrimental to our efforts. So, it's kind of trying to figure out what's going on, you know, like over here. Well, it turns out he was trying to do just a heli flank. Mm, wouldn't recommend it. Uh, we were able to get a nice cheesy kill at the beginning with, um, whose MSTAs were there? Um, Bonjourg, um, Bonjourg. He was able to get a nice kill on the CV, but I feel like it was kind of a waste of points considering what ended up happening. So anyways, I ended up getting to this position first. Uh, ended up killing off an M1A2, and now he's got some, you know, ADATs, some Wolverines, Kimura of ads, you know, all this other stuff here. I, meanwhile, I haven't lost a single tank. And here I am, you know, I was kind of, well, I say kind of, I was worried because I saw this going on up here. And I was just like, oh crap. And no one had gone t and taken golf, and I was just like, oh shoot. Because I was expecting this push from behind here and I would have been totally screwed and that's at least was that was my perspective on it. I was like oh my you know here um, Star Wars man nice nickname or a nice nickname by the way he's, he's, uh, he's just gonna push straight through my lines I don't stand a chance lost um, my tanks there because of that Apache longbow great job with that you know what he's just doing da doing some dancing around here with his expensive helicopters but in the end, it's not accomplishing anything. And that was my biggest issue. Was here we have, you know, Star Wars Man 13 over here is able to have totally free reign over the right flank. Because I can't fo I'm not focusing on the middle as well as focusing on, you know, the right flank. I can't do that, you know, right now. I'm in a tight spot. I'm trying to have all my tanks survive. And if that's the case, oh boy, bad things are coming. Meanwhile, he's running straight into a chaparral. He didn't think they were going to push that. And yeah, guess what they did? They pushed it. And goodbye, KA-52. And oh my gosh, it was really making me annoyed. And now we had a pretty close chance of defeating this, but um, their Humvee with their TACOM just made it away. And that was, yeah, that was that. But both of us in the middle here are pretty equally devastated. However, Star Wars Man is making a great push into our right flank. I'm just trying to, fig you know, frantically figure out, okay, what can I do here to push this back? Um, yeah. This is, I don't know what deck he was using. It's probably Soviet general deck. Uh, I think they, maybe they both had uh, Soviet general decks. Yeah, it seems like it. See, we've got this area locked down. I'm just pushing as far as I can with these guys. Meanwhile, I didn't want to lose my T-72, so it's getting repaired. So I'm like, hey, secure this position. You know, like, we got to take this. And he's flying around a couple of man pads. At that point, my disappointment was just, like, really? Really? You know, this is what we're doing? You know, that was kind of how I felt. It was... Really a disappointment. I don't want anyone to take out their heat for this guy, but I can just tell you it was really annoying. Uh, you know, and it, it was frustrating for me. And here, these guys are getting shot down by a couple of daps. Once again, Star Wars Man 13, really good job on his part. 
that his? No, that's um, Dr. Faulkner's. So you get bits repaired, and I haven't just haven't managed it yet. And so here comes an interesting part in the video um, of the game where um, he decides to counter this push with a dap. Now this is, would normally make a degree of sense. The dap, or I believe it's direct action platform, has twin auto cannons as well as mini guns. Which, in theory, should be more than enough to tackle a couple of IFVs and some infantry. However, I have BWP 2Ds, and he didn't mention that. And I think that would have saved him his DAP. Um, because the BWP 2Ds have auto cannons. They also have three armor on them, so... Makes for a bad day for helicopters. For example, no armor, only two armor penetration, so it's going to have to close if it wants to have even a hope, you know, a chance to penetrate my armor. Now, that at this range, they're pretty close, but my but my armor penetration, as well as my accuracy, is also good. So at that point, I'm using my Picota Z-Mex to worry it and stun it, and yep, the PWP. Boom, boom, and they go in. Uh, didn't even need them. The infantry shot right out of the sky. Right out of the sky. We got a Black Hawk down, everyone. We got Black Hawk down. So, you know, there was that. Squirrel Salesman was a bit late on that, though, and so it didn't actually drop. He probably just clicked the attack marker, you know, and hoped that it would work, you know, but, um, yeah, they're gone. You know, he's again flying around a KA-52, and they spot it, and they were just being so overly aggressive that it really threatened to undermine our entire, you know, um, chance of victory here. And that was my biggest annoyance here, was... We had a flank that we were clearly losing and needed support on. Meanwhile, they had this, not to say wrong hope, I mean, they have one command unit so far that's been deployed, but eventually they're going to counter it. And it was just sort of not, they were just not waiting for their luck to run out. And here we have, you know, these guys going in, and it was just a lot of aggressive pushes that I think were just overly aggressive and thus just utterly pointless. If we look at the way the scores are, uh, we're losing right now. I may have a ton of points, but, you know, they're winning on the whole. Once again, you know, hey, we got these BWP-2s, you know, over here, gotta kill them. And the KA-52 is just having free reign here, and that's an issue, probably until the DAPs come along. And, of course, we have the command squads getting engaged until the Wolverine says, no, you do not do that. We defend our Canadians and probably, you know, one more shot on that Wolverine. And yeah, they, oh, the Daps, I think, got it. And that command squad was wounded, but they weren't dead. If they had spotted it and gotten out, better chance of that KA-52 surviving. Meanwhile, we've lost two KA-52s so far. Out of our six possible that we could take. I can't take any KA-52s. Meanwhile, um, we've got some TACOMs, you know, that are set up shop over here. And one, there's a bit I could do. I could come in through the rear here. Um, and that would have cut off, you know, his, you know, kind of his lines. But it's just a precarious situation for me. Because here I am all alone, and I've lost this flank. I have no control or guarantee of anything on this flank. And anything I do, I have to be the one to do it. Which, I mean, is a reality sometimes. You know, you're going to have teammates who you know, can really support you, and there are going to be teammates who really can't. Oh boy, I'm trying to get it to move, and it's like, no, I'm not moving. You know, the cursor will not make you, will not move. And it's just this constant, you know, like, Go, go straight for, you know, the win. You know, it's sort of go straight for their spawn point instead of, hey, let's push them back. If they lose this flank, they lose a bulk of their current offensive power and we can push Charlie and then we can hit Alpha from three angles at once. And that's going to be hard for them to, you know, defend against. But right now they're getting more income because we haven't locked down Charlie. And it's all that that really just fed my frustration with this. Because here we are making this, these very aggressive pushes. And here we've got um, Merida and such engaging an M1 IP. He had come over the ridge and we had I had some BWP-2s. They were preparing. I was going to prepare a rush into the town. Didn't totally fan out though. And he got an easy side shot here. Which 
It was like, ugh, annoying. But it happens, and you always have to be ready for that. My 24D, I'm just moving it here. I'm ignoring, you know, this. I can outrun it, and I'm going to try to land it and get some recon in here. That was my goal, because I was thinking, hey, maybe if we get some recon in here, we can do, we can scout what's coming, see what they're bringing in, and win. Hmm. What an interesting concept. some more guys there probably was it had like clicked all this and I said hey the enemy is pushing here this isn't what I needed look how close they are to our artillery right now it's not good or how close they're firing to the command unit just some critiques I'm not trying to be like totally salty or you know angry at this it's just one of those things where hey we are in a tight situation here and it's clear you're not paying as much attention to the tactical situation as we need to be. Meanwhile, this bombing run did a great job at sending out the enemy. We lost a couple of coaches we met in friendly fire, but we eliminated the Marines, we stunned them, but we panicked them, and that was ultimately part of the goal. Interestingly enough, he used the IL-102 to do a strafing run. I have to... Hats off to him for this. This was just a... Mostly brilliant move, except for when it charged straight back over the um, <laughs> the chaparral and got shut down. But you know, other than that, it was an interesting move. Um, not one I would have first, not the first thing I would have thought of. But yeah, we got an MIP retreating, and at this point, the push, you know, power from his, you know, this attack is gone. Meanwhile, we get more tanks pushing in, and yeah, we've get we're, you know, circumventing and taking this position now. Especially considering we're flanking with this T-55AM Merida. Just a 40-point tank. You know, these... I'm just bringing in these 40-point tanks. They're not expensive. And they're not too terribly great. But they're, you know, in the... Deployed properly, they can do a good job. And that's kind of what I'm banking on. Using them in this way. For example, he's got an optical failure. I come over this ridge... Not much he can do. However, this Bradley here did a decent job engaging with his autocannon. At that point, the artillery came in, destroyed a lot of his um, forces there. He's got some riflemen and some marines here. Great, you know, defenses here. Except he doesn't have any SMAWs or ATGMs like light riflemen, which are going to hinder his, you know, ability here. But his mortars are doing a good job suppressing my infantry that are out in the open currently. So yeah, there was all those things to consider. ATGM smash into this, but the AT4 has overcome my Merida. Which have done pretty well. Got some nice kills on the enemy. I said, hey, infantry in here, you know, just you know, making the note of it that we should. He's got a super cover here, you know. There's no AA. And there's some KA50s here, but. By now, I'm sorry, but by now we gotta stop it with, you know, the helicopter game. And I think this is, you know, one of those reasons, and I think some beginners... I'm not saying that all beginners are terrible, but, like, some players just are enchanted by the magic of super awesome helicopters, like longbows and, you know, um, you know, and stuff like that. But they forget how vulnerable a helicopter really is. Tanks are vulnerable, helicopters are vulnerable, heck, infantry is vulnerable, all that stuff isn't the most robust unit in the in war game. However, what is it? It's a heck of a lot more capable of surviving than a helicopter is, which is up in the air, and, you know, there's dedicated units to killing it, like, of course, AA units. Huh, what a concept. Yeah, using this BWP um, here, though, and it's just, yeah, engaging this world. At this point, it was kind of a fight against time, trying to kill the Wolverine. But, you know, before the bombs hit. It's all the last defiant shot and kills it, though. 
so that was good. But we have a pretty weak position here. And I put down dead, you know, stop engaging, no more point, you know, and wasting your artillery shells. This is what we should have been hitting. And once again, got this nice little helicopter, and we just, I think my allies were just overly reliant on that. And it wasn't that, you know, there's no problem with, you know, liking to use helicopters. You know, helicopters can be good uses on the battlefield, but when you're overusing them like this, you know, um, and just relying on helicopters, then you have an issue. And that is that we're you're overusing the helicopters. Good, you know, smaller, you know, numbers and proper and when properly used. But once you're overusing them, it's it's bad. The star, you know, two six six here, and uh, the thunderbolt's not gonna have any of that. <laughs> any, any of that coming in here, and yeah, <laughs> that's the thunderbolt for you. There's no killing like overkill. You know, there's no, no, nothing. You know, doing it like overdoing it. So, yep, there's always that. We got our Topaz, though. They're gonna try to take out these mortars, which have been a pain in our side. Eventually, though, we do end up detecting this thunderbolt here, and I was really determined to kill it. Um, and I'm really surprised that it didn't. It, thunderbolts, they can really take a beating, and I th if they could have gotten that one last missile off just a tad sooner, <laughs> like, if it could have just made that quicker turn, you know, in kind of one of the issues... Well, it, I mean, it's got a turn radius of 300, but tight turn radius, but just not tight enough. And it was that Wolverine that really, with its one last air-to-air <laughs> -air missile, saved that um, Thunderbolt, I'd say. And I think the other issue is that the Thunderbolt can be so slow that it actually, my fighter overtook it because it passed it. Just one of those interesting things there. You know, I'm just trying to manage so many things, it was just becoming a major issue for my coordination on the whole. We may have more points, and we may have more control of the zones, but in the, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, what we, we aren't winning the point war. They're winning the, the war of attrition, which was the big issue that we had. They were winning the war of attrition. So, yeah. These Marines are getting forced out by the napalm. Good play with the napalm there. Um, I think it was uh, Make, Mako there. Yep. Let's get a little Earl there. Disengaging with the Humvees and the Riflemen's here. The riflemen here. I've got more of those T-72s, but I just haven't pushed them up yet. Mostly because I'm more focused on, you know, the right flank at this point. So I can push up without worrying about getting cut off. However, he hadn't taken into consideration the possibility of getting flanked either. And so that... Um, made Star Wars Man over here pay, um, and I decided to exploit that a little bit. Meanwhile, knowing these Marines were panicked, I was not afraid to keep this, um, these Jaguar here, these Jaguars here. Besides, I knew they could also take the punishment if they had to, and so because of that, I wasn't too worried. Had these guys back here, and I kind of just forgot about them, I was more concerned about just managing the forces I had than using my reserve units. So yeah, at this point, they were worried about me and the point that they designated quite a few forces over here to try to kill me, uh, or to kill, you know, these forces over here. Only have a couple of Bakota Z-Max, but I want to make sure they get their last little shot at glory. Oh, and here it comes. I don't know why he was, like, confused about what was going on here. I had these guys here, but I was more so, you know, recon base, you know, like, hey, I don't want to lose these guys, you know. However, they do have a pretty weak AA net. And also, Bonjour had been, you know, smack talking a bit, <laughs> and I'm like, 
I, I, and I just have to repeat this just because it was funny. It's like, hey, RC, you know, your freaking pings are so annoying, you know, and it's, that's paraphrasing and, like, taking it, removing some profanities there. And at that point, I was to the point of swearing, and it was just like, you're crappy, <laughs> rushes. You know, really, you know, it's like you've given them so many points and they've been poorly executed, they've been rash, they've been, you know, poorly handled. It was just a mix of those things. And I was just fed up with that, you know, sort of, you know, you know thinking. And it was because Wargame isn't a game where you can be rash or bold. You know, I mean, there's definitely room to be, you know, um, decisive, you know, and strike at the right moment, strike early on, strike often, and be aggressive. But being aggressive isn't bad. Being reckless is bad. And sadly, we did see too... I feel like I saw too much of that on our side, you know, in this game. It was just too much, you know, it was recklessness. And that was a major issue. He's putting down some attack markers here. He's seeing that, hey, I'm pushing, you know. He's in a tight spot as well. So it was just this whole... Yeah, it was this whole game kind of made me angry, but I feel like it's important for people to see this because, you know, figuring that out, realizing that being, you know, you know, brash like that just isn't the way. There's always a better option in Wargame than to just charge into the enemy across a bridge. It's always, always a better option. Unless literally the enemy has locked down every other thing. He's got some thunderbolts over, the thunderbolts coming in over here. I spot that, and so does my partner. Uh, so does my ally. Who was that? That was Mako. So he spot that. He ends up getting the kill. When I was like, "Come on, really? You know, here, <laughs> here, this guy. I feel like he deserved the kill, but you know, yeah, have to make our Russian comrades feel appreciated and welcome." Pretty tied up on points. Um, so, yep. That was probably me just pointing out the. Um, something. I don't know. Maybe I was just pointing out the um, Thunderbolt to him. I don't know. I don't remember that, actually. But at this point, yeah, the Marines are wisely retreating. This is n a no-win situation. And so, yeah, it's, it's just time to pull out. Telepass gets some cheeky kills on the enemy, and, yeah, we're just kind of trying to get push through this town and eliminate the enemy. And I'm scouting it out with our infantry first if we get into some street fighting, because if he had just... Um, if he had put his infantry back here or back here... He would have been pretty good and safe from the bombing runs. And that's kind of the trouble with keeping units like the, these guys on the outskirts. Um, is, yeah, it gives you some opportunities for kills, but doesn't mean you're always going to do pretty well. Meanwhile, this is just a waste of ATGMs. Um, you know, he's just wasted, what, mm, six ATGMs on, you know, just a couple five-point transports. The longbow has much more potential than that, than that. It can do a lot better. I mean, I mean a lot better. And at this point, he must have seen these Grom moving across and used, you know, kind of on a hunch, you know, fired. That was, that hurt. So I lost my forward position here, which sucked. And yeah, they've just set up this kind of defensive line along here. Uh, meanwhile, we have a push with not enough recon, not enough AA. And we can see where that's going to get us. I felt like this almost lost us the game. Yeah, we lost that. There, they lost that AA. Wisely picking that off first. BMPT's here, you know, T62's, everything is coming in. It was just, you know, the red, you know, the Soviet tank barrage. And then a ton of Norovs coming in here, probably to fan out and try to find the enemy. But it was just, in the end, it wasn't the way to do it. There's always a better way than to just rush headlong into the enemy. There's always, always in Wargame a better way to do that. So when you see stuff like this, it really bugs me. Um, it's the opposite of, say, like, 
the teachings of, say, Sun Tzu from, you know, who wrote, literally wrote the book on how to conduct a war. You know, um, you know, so it, it's one of those things. It's like, come on, really, guys? You know, we can do better than this. But yeah, so when we get, like, this Norov spam here, it's like, this is just brute force. Pure brute force. If I were the enemy here, I would get my longbow, it, well, if, assuming it had ammo, which it, if it hadn't wasted it on those five-point transports, they'd be in a better place. Kill the Strail up, and then turned off the, you know, the missiles on all of these things, and just gone in and killed them off with a gun. It may sound ridiculous, but none of this stuff has machine guns. If they had machine guns, I'd hesitate. But this, I'm not even, I wouldn't even hesitate. I'd just do that. Manages to land it just in time, though, before these these guys get their missiles off. And they instead start targeting the Fighting Falcon. And then I should have just kept them on the Fighting Falcon, but instead I, you know, kind of screwed with them. Ordered them to engage, you know, this, um, the EF-111 Raven over here. And, yeah, um, they got some hits on it, but they didn't kill it. And so it might have been better just to have committed to that one target. And at this point, I mean, he's got rockets, you know, he's doing that same thing. He's engaging with the gun. He doesn't need to use the uh, all that other fancy stuff to kill it. And so that was just disappointing to see. And we can see just how, look at that. They're winning once again. You know, and it's it was just one of those moments where it's just like, oh my. And now they didn't have enough AA, and we were able to eke by a bit with that. You know, um, so they were able to kill off some of that stuff. And, but it was just, oh, for me, this just didn't feel good, you know, just like, just my gut sense was just, you know, all, you know, felt terrible about this game. Meanwhile, I want to snipe this longbow because it, it, it basically would be the end of this push, and we've come too far to let that, you know, to just end that, you know, we, we don't have enough points, you know, we're losing so much, it's, it would have just been disappointing, so we've just got to kill that longbow. Meanwhile, trying to get out of there. Managed to make it out. Um, Intruder, though, is still on the march once again. Uh, they got lucky, moved just in time. Here we got that Tomcat coming in. Looks like I th Tom Cruise shot down another aircraft, another MiG. And at this point, they only had one command left. And it was basically all over. Um, and they recognized it. But it was just one of those cases where I don't feel like... I didn't. I never felt that great about this. You know, here we got our MiGs, though. They're taking out that Corsair. Good kill there. By our, you know, nice little 75... Or 80 point... Um, aircraft just off of you know where the CV is but it's stunned and they figured out where it was and yeah so we're right at the end of our gameplay here and I started pushing up again with our T-72s and that's when the Norovs found it and they killed it however if we actually you know looking at the points we had some decent scores but Ooh, I didn't feel good about this game. I I had the lowest casualties of the whole game. I also had the most kills of the whole game. And I also had the most command points of the whole game. That didn't make me feel good about, you know, my team. And, yeah, it, I, I'm not trying to sound like I'm smack-talking everybody on my team. Because I wasn't... That's not what I wanted to do. But it... But things that we... I wanted to show were just the brashness of some of, you know, my teammates' pushes. And while I was trying to, you know, eliminate the resistance on our right flank, which my team almost entirely forgot about except for me, if I wasn't the one who was constantly reminding everyone about it, I think we would have lost that flank and we could have been at a severe disadvantage if they had come in. They could have killed our artillery, potentially killed my CV, and we would have been in a tight spot where I don't know how we would have recovered from that. if. You know, I hadn't done anything there. And then, you know, so it was all those things where it was just... wanted to hit something, I feel like. Because it was just... 
you know, something that I felt like should be so simple, you know, is that you don't charge in there with, you know, those tanks and stuff, and it just was ignored, and I... I know I'm ranting, I know I'm ranting, but it just... The lessons that needed to be applied were not applied. Which led to, you know, losing, you know, a thousand points here, and losing far more points than were necessary there. And so, yeah, that's, that's what I felt like. I had most of the kills on the team, you know, I had probably... 40% of the kills, you know, 40, 40, and 10%, you know, and then, you know, um, add almost, what, probably 70, 60% of our, you know, point, our 60, 61, 62% of our uh, command points, while maintaining, uh, we had, what, 4,000 losses, so only about 25% of the casualty, or, you know, you know, only 33% of the casualties then are so. Probably more about 25%. So it was just... For me, it was a good game, but I f felt like for my team, I didn't feel good about it. Um, that was something that greatly worried me and, you know, saddened me, truly. It was like, come on, guys. Can't we pull together? And it was irritating to see all that stuff going on. As I, my ire was raised in this video. Anyways, if you got through all the ranting, and I hope you found some deep hidden message in this video... Anyways, this is RC0538 signing off. Have a good day. Thank you for watching.